apartheid will always be etched in the history of South Africa. We cannot forgive it away. We cannot make peace with it, especially if it's so prevalent 27 years into democracy. Hello, hello, it's your girl Miss Cal's on yet another video. I'm so glad you guys are joining me again for this one on Crime Corner. Yes, another video on Crime Corner. But as per usual, before I get started, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to comment, and of course, share the video. Also, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post a new video. Today's case will be looking at a man named Louis Square. Now, he was dubbed the apartheid serial killer. Yes, the apartheid serial killer. I don't even know why I said that, but it's the apartheid serial killer. And you know when we talk about apartheid, it's real. It's sad. It's devastating. So... Louis Square was born in 1959 and he gained worldwide recognition when it was said that he killed 39 people. Yes, 39 people which were black and colored. I need to emphasize that, which were black and colored. Now, he also confessed, apparently he confessed to a journalist that he had killed 100 people between 1986 and 1989. So that's a lot of people that this man killed. Hence, he was dubbed the apartheid serial killer. His killing spree happened when he was a security guard. But prior to being a security guard, he was a police officer in the dog unit. And when he left the force, the white-owned business owners hired him in East London to protect their businesses. So he killed people in the name of protecting businesses. His most infamous kill is that of a 13-year-old boy named Liffey Piertas. Yes, Liffey Piertas. Now, Liffey went into Wimpy in East London, and he wanted to steal some cash. And I mean, like, in those days, blacks and colored people didn't have much money. So, Liffey wanted to steal in Wimpy. And he got in, and Lewis uh, got maybe the alarm and came to the Wimpy. Now, little 13 year old, I didn't mention that, Liffy Piertas was 13 years old at the time. He hid in a toilet, behind a toilet. And now Louis Squirt got into the shop, saw Liffy Piertas behind a toilet, hiding, and shot him. That was his modus operandi. Like, literally, the way he killed was to shoot his victims. So at 13, I'm trying to think. He was a boy. He was a boy. And when a little boy is hiding behind a toilet, it's a sign of, I'm surrendering. Please don't shoot me. Please. I'm sorry. But Lewis shot him. What makes me upset about this whole situation, he states that the killings were not racially motivated and that race should just put, be put aside that he was simply doing his job now i've got a quote here i didn't even memorize it i've got a quote here where he says what he says he says i never apologized for what i did i apologized for any hurt or pain caused through my action during the course of my work I don't, is that an apology? Like, for me, Lewis, it's not an apology. Like, he's not acknowledging what he did. He's not acknowledging the fact that you killed people. You killed a little boy. Lewis Squirt had a choice. Everybody in life has a choice. And you can either choose to kill or not to kill. And he had that choice and he made his choice. There's so many apartheid activists, white apartheid activists, that made their choice. One of them that I 
entirely applaud is Helen Suzman. Helen Suzman made a choice to be an activist, to stand against apartheid. Why couldn't Lewis Square do the same? Why couldn't he? Lewis Square was charged with 19 cases of murder and 21 cases of attempted murder. But out of those 19 cases of murder, only seven were convicted and he was only convicted of two cases of attempted murder. So, justice? Nah, no justice. Not even a bit. He only served 12 years of his 20 year sentence and was released in 2004 as he benefited from the Nelson Mandela uh, sentence reduction. So I feel like he shouldn't have benefited. Honestly, I feel like he shouldn't have benefited from that Nelson Mandela reduction, um, reduction of sentence. S like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I know a lot of people are going to have their own comments and it's okay to have your own comment. But I feel like he really didn't serve the, the sentence he should have served. The twist to the story though that I found absolutely shocking and I don't know if I, I don't know, I'm not even going to call it remarkable because it's sick, it's murder. So Lewis Squirt has a daughter. A daughter right and the daughter had black friends and associated with the black community but the family especially the mother was not having it so the daughter hired a black man Sabrina Square hired a black man to kill her mother and she was in the other room with her child now when asked why did you do that? She says her mom is a racist bully. I'm like, we can't call her a hero because she killed her own mother. That's wrong. You don't do that. Killing, there's no justification of killing whatsoever. But it makes me think, if she felt this way about black people, I mean we can still raise a society that's good. I mean, she had a bit of good in her because she felt that she wanted to associate with black people. She wanted to be friends with black people. But her family, her mom was not having it. So there was a bit of good in her, right? And even in prison, they, they applaud her. Apparently she's a great girl in prison. And she was sentenced to the same prison as her dad. And when her dad was given that amnesty, she asked her dad to look after her daughter. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we call her a villain? Or do we applaud her in a way for saying, I want to be friends with black people. I want to be associated with black people. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle in terms of, I would call her, not a hero as per se, but I would call her, um, she did good in terms of, see the racial the racial segregation as not being good and she did bad in killing her mother she shouldn't have done that so now you might be asking yourself where is lewis square well he is a director and a beneficiary of a multi-million rand project set up listen to this set up to help poor black farmers mm -hmm. take that in Take, take that in. Now, how many other people could have been directors of that multi-million rand project? How many? But Lewis Square, a mass murderer, a mass killer, who says he sees no wrong in what he did because he was just doing his job. And now he's a director of such a project. Department of Rural Development and Land Reform is looking into how Lewis Square was actually hired because they feel as though he shouldn't have been hired even to begin with. This is not my own opinion. Rural, the Department of Rural Development as well as Land Reform is analyzing the screening process as to how a mass murderer and mass killer, serial killer, was hired or became a director of that project. 
the project was put in place to begin with to actually help coloreds indians black people that were sidelined by the apartheid regimes he was part of the apartheid regimes how does he now become the head the director of such a project now we all have our own opinions about lewis square and some of you it's the first time hearing his name and you can have your own opinion i don't mind but i just feel as though justice should have been served in a different way lewis was not supposed to be a director i feel like if lewis really says he repented if lewis says he really is sorry then he should have started an organization which gave back to the people that he took from to the people that he hurt the people of east london he says he's never met up with the families of the victims to apologize it doesn't matter i think all black people are victims all black people lost something during apartheid and he needed to give back not to be hired as a director no and just be given hey they no no he needed to take initiative start a program where he gives back himself so that is personally my take on it you can have your take and it's okay have a a, a critical debate an honest debate about this but for me i feel like justice has not been served fully and the rural the department of rural development and land reform must investigate this i do have to say i am pro reconciliation i am pro reconciliation but we have to be honest with ourselves the scars the the pain the thought processes of apartheid are still very much remnant in 2020 we know of penny sparrow we know of all those cases where people used race to benefit or people used race to discriminate so let's be honest with ourselves race is still something we need to have a narrative on and i'm going to say it again it starts very young once you teach a child color they'll forever learn color but once you teach them to see the character of a person i then color then you won with that child then you know then you know you're raising a child that's going to uplift its community a child that's going to uplift people around them Whew, that was a uh, a mouthful. <laughs> But anyway guys, that is it on today's crime corner on the case of Lewis Squid. I hope you guys actually enjoyed the video and found it very educational. Do share it with other people so they can know um the history of South Africa. They can know the people who who segregated and were part of the racial segregation um in in those days so uh don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to comment and of course hit that notification bell so each time i post a video you know about it until next time on crime corner i love you guys stay safe stay safe